Hello, everybody. This is the final installment of the Come Follow Me weekly videos for the Book of Mormon. I hope you've enjoyed all of the ones previous. They're all in YouTube, so you can watch them at any time you're studying the Book of Mormon. Hopefully, in four years, if you're studying, you want to go back and review them, you're more than welcome to. I do want to say that in Come Follow Me, Moroni 7, 8, and 9 is one week, and then Moroni 10 is another week. And then the final week is usually Christmas study, study the Christmas lessons. But we're just going to do the last four chapters of Moroni in this video, and you can enjoy studying them. So if you'll go to Moroni chapter 7, and again, I'll just give you some historical context and give you some ideas of some things to study a little more deeply because there's obviously more days than there are chapters. And especially this past week, the chapters were very short. So you can go a little deeper in your discussions and your studying. So if you go to chapter 7, if you'll notice the first verse, and now I, Moroni, write a few of the words of my father, Mormon, which he spake concerning faith, hope, and charity. So if you'll notice in verse 2, it says, and now I, Mormon, speak unto you. Now, just again, a little context. Mormon writes some letters to his son, who we know that Mormon will get killed in battle. And Moroni has the record, and he has the plates, and he's the last righteous uh, Nephite on the planet. And he's in hiding, and he's recording some of the last thoughts that he wants to put on the plates before he goes. In, in verse 3, Mormon specifically says he's talking about, or talking to the peaceable followers of Christ. And he talks about, judge these things of you. This is verse 4 because of your peaceable walk with the children of men. Now, it's interesting. He's talking about peaceable at a time when there's not peace on the earth, at least not in the Americas, right? And in the 5th century, in the old world, we would say that they're the beginning of the Dark Ages. The apostasy is in hold of Europe and, and the Middle East and so forth. So he wants to talk to those who are willing to bring peace a word that gets used a lot is in verse 6. He says, Do it with real intent, or it profiteth you nothing. Verse 9, it's mentioned again. And also, it is counted evil unto a man if he shall pray and not with real intent. So if your prayers don't have intentions, if you pray grudgingly or whatever reason, if it's not with real intent, uh, he talks about that a lot. In verse 11, he compares that person with a bitter fountain. A bitter fountain cannot bring forth good water, and so for, and vice versa. So, so there's some great things in 7. I know a lot of you will study things about the Spirit of Christ, prayer. But I, I just hope that maybe as you're reading, you focus on the most important thing, which is the Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 31. And the office of their ministry is to call men unto repentance and to fulfill and to do the work of the covenants of the Father. Again, what is the work of the Father? It's Moses 139, right? So think about what the real work is and what the atonement, which is the repentance. It brings us back closer to the Savior. He also talks, obviously, a lot about faith, hope, and charity. And I hope you study it, you look at faith, hope, and charity in the context that the Savior uses. Because we use those words different. So we need to understand how the Savior uses those words. When Mormon records, or when Moroni records his father Mormon's words here about hope, you know, we use in the English language words like, man, I hope it's going to be great weather today, or I hope our team wins. That's not the hope that Mormon's talking about here. So when you read it, understand the word and the meaning of the word hope that they use. So let's go on to chapter 8. The only other thing in chapter 7 is make sure you focus charity. It's the Relief Society motto, 
which means we probably should study charity and understand it on a deeper level. Chapter 8, though, is an interesting chapter that, you know, as a kid, I would read that and I'm like, well, everyone knows this. Well, obviously, everyone doesn't know this. Uh, the introduction of infant baptism it goes back to the Dark Ages when the belief of if you died and you weren't baptized, you're going to hell. Well, because Jesus said uh, to be saved, you have to be baptized. But what they didn't understand and did not believe and didn't have the Spirit of Christ teaching them is the power of the atonement and how the atonement works in the lives of children and those that aren't accountable. So this is a great chapter to read for that. I'll tell you how I gained a, a testimony of chapter 8. I was on my mission, and again, I had read it, and I just thought, that's a nice chapter, no big deal, not the most exciting chapter in the Book of Mormon. And I had a man who was a convert to the church stand up in a little branch I was serving at in Sweden, who stood up and he said, I read the Book of Mormon, and I didn't realize it was true until I came to Moroni chapter 8. Okay, so he'd read the whole book, and now he's at chapter 8, and he said, and when I read this, I knew it was true. And then he looked down and he read in sacrament meeting in a branch of, I don't think there were 15 people in that little branch. And that's including four missionaries. And he read word for word, chapter eight. And when he stood up and he goes, I knew the church was true and the Book of Mormon is true after I read those words. And he closed with, in the name of Jesus Christ. And he sat down and I looked out and like, I've never seen a chapter be so impactful in one person's life as that man with that chapter. So I I, I never uh, not read a chapter without thinking of him, without saying, okay, every chapter has something for somebody, because that chapter did for him. So it's great. Uh, verse 9, though, or chapter 9, go to chapter 9. Uh, again, we talked in chapter 7 that Mormon was concerned, he was talking to the peaceable followers of Christ. But in this chapter, which is another epistle that Mormon wrote to Moroni, and Moroni is now including it at the end of the, the gold plates, he puts on there about anger. It's a discourse on anger. And verse 5, so exceedingly to do, let me start over, for so exceedingly do they anger that it seemeth me that they have no fear of death. And they have lost their love one towards another. And they thirst after blood and revenge continually. Anger leads to a loss of love. In the Institute Book of Mormon manual, there is a little paragraph about that. It's worth reading. Uh, feel free to open up in your Gospel Library app. Go to Institute, go to Book of Mormon student manual readings and uh, jump to Mormon, or excuse me, Moroni chapter 9 and read that little paragraph. Uh, it's worth studying. So if you're angry, we're missing. If you recall, if you're old enough to recall, Gordon B. Hinckley gave a talk in General Conference, April 2000, excuse me, October 2007. And he talked about anger and controlling your anger, being slow to anger. Uh, again, that's a great topic. Especially if you want to, like you feel like you have a short fuse, you have a quick temper. Uh, that's a topic that we should we should study. Well, again, chapter nine is not pleasing. It talks some horrible, gruesome details in there. And how do you get to that point in society? It's that anger that turns so there's no love left in you. You don't see a human like a human anymore. Uh, let's go to chapter 10 then. The very final words that Moroni is going to put in here, the only thing he has after Moroni chapter 10 is he puts the introduction of the Book of Mormon at the very beginning where it says, the Book of Mormon, a hand, an account written by the hand of Mormon upon the plates taken from the plates of Nephi. That here at the beginning of the Book of Mormon, that little beginning, was written by Moroni. And it was the very last thing on the plates. But let's take a look at chapter 10 now. More than Verse 1. More than 420 years have passed away since the sign was given of the coming of Christ. And I seal you up these records, which I have spoken, a few words by the way of 
exhortation unto you. Now, again, in verse 3, he uses the words remember. I would remember that ye would remember. And he says, I want you to remember this. Don't forget this. Receive this. Ponder this. Again, verse 4, with real intent, pray. So there's really three things in chapter 10 to focus on. One is this invitation to study and pray and to gain a testimony with real intent. The second thing in here is all about the gifts of the Spirit. Like, pray that you know it's true. Once you know it's true, then you're going to receive a series of gifts and how to qualify for the gifts and pray for these gifts. I think Heavenly Father is one of those, ask ye shall receive. In other words, there's gifts of the Spirit that He wants to give us. We just need to ask. So I hope we ask. And then the very end of chapter 10 is the great invitation to come unto Christ and be perfected in Him. Again, the perfection comes because of those gifts that we receive and we we magnify them. And there's just uh, some great things. I hope you enjoy your studies of the last four chapters of the Book of Mormon. And if you have any requests, uh, go ahead and put any comments in the YouTube channel below, and uh, I'll reach out and I'll help. Now, what happened to Moroni after he buried the plates? In re- reality, I-, I don't know. However, there is some speculation and some word going around uh, that Joseph Smith told what happened to Moroni. In fact, uh, I'll read this to you. Uh, in Spanish Fork, Utah... In 1896, so we're years after the death of the prophet Joseph Smith, there was a man by the name of Brother Higginson, and he talked with Thomas B. Marsh. Now remember, Thomas B. Marsh was at one time the president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. He would have been the second president of the church, but he apostatized. But he came back. But he told... uh, Brother Higginson, that Joseph Smith said this. What happened with the fate of Moroni? Joseph Smith had a vision in which a wild, he appeared in a wild country, and on the scene Moroni was there, and six Indians were in pursuit. He stopped one of the Indians, and they measured with their swords. Moroni smote him, and he fell dead. Another Indian advanced and contended him. This Indian also fell by the sword. A third Indian then stepped forth and met the same fate. A fourth afterwards contended with him. But the struggle with the fourth, Moroni being exhausted, was killed. So supposedly, uh, Moroni died by the hands of the Lamanites uh, being chased down in the end. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. And maybe it really doesn't even matter. What really does matter is Moroni did, in fact, ride upon these plates of gold, bury them in the ground, and appeared to the boy uh, Joseph Smith when he was 17 years old, and after four years were able to uh, pull those plates out of the ground and begin transcribing them, translating them into our English language. I know the Book of Mormon is true. I love the book, and I hope you've enjoyed studying it, and I hope this has been helpful. Have a great day.